first question from the line of Amarnath Bhakat from Ministry of Finance of Oman. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, please, please go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah. Uh, I just want to know this cash level which you are holding at the moment, uh, close to 4,000 crore. What's the plan for this utilization? Because your capex requirement anyway is very less. How this cash is going to be utilized? Any plan for it? So Amanat, uh, uh, the 3,900 crore cash we have on our books, out of this approximately 1,500 crores we had uh, uh, prior to our strategic uh, uh, tie up with the Reliance Group and another 2165 crores got infused as part of that particular uh, strategic deal. At this point of time, uh, one, we are focusing on our core business, which anyway is uh, free cash flow generating. At the same time, there are certain new initiatives that we are pursuing. As you would appreciate, we operate in a very sort of uh, disruptive uh, sector, so to say. Uh, a part of this particular cash could get utilized in future towards promotion of our uh, uh, new initiatives or if any other inorganic opportunities come along. At this point of time, we are ensuring that we get our core business back on track and utilization of this particular cash on the balance sheet. Obviously, we will uh, take stock uh, as our new initiatives uh, unfold. Your company, as you correctly said also, this is a cash generating com company. So the utilization of the cash to for your core business is really very limited. And after the reliance money came into the business, uh, and these are, it's become a kind of an investment company, you know, that managing the treasury, uh, getting the getting the return, which is much lower than your uh, business returns. Actually, it is hampering your return on capital employed uh, on an overall business basis. So even if your business is growing high because of that cash level, your ROC is getting contracted a lot. So unless you find out certain certain fruitful way to utilize this cash, uh, maybe an inorganic or whatever uh, company thing there, this will become an overhang for, for, for your uh, return on capital, isn't it? So yes, you are right that at this point of time, the major chunk of cash that sits that earns about whatever seven seven and a half percent kind of yield uh, so at this point of time as i said there are certain new initiatives in pipeline uh, once we proceed over next few quarters uh, the company could sort of reassess uh, the best utilization of this cash at this point of time uh, we are ensuring that we don't do anything uh, silly with this cash so to say uh, and at the same time whatever returns could be maximized on this particular uh, treasury in the safest possible manner that is being done. If I could add to this point, you know, Abhishek. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, so when we, we were doing the deal last year with Reliance, we were around that time, we were just limping back from COVID-related disruptions. But our, our, uh, our goals are much more ambitious and Reliance, uh, with the Reliance strategic investment, our idea is to enter into many uh value-added field so the we felt at that time there is a need for capital and that that's how the money was infused into the company but this quarter uh if you see the last quarter our strategy our strategies have yielded good results we decided to focus on our core business uh, which is local search you know because it was mission critical for us to put our systems in place you know to overall see uh performance uh take off you know because um we have been highly profitable company. Yes, you are right. When with the, all this new money into the company, there's going to be a challenge on uh, return of capital. But then you don't want to make a harakiri by throwing the money into some random business to acquire something. Uh, I strongly feel uh, with my 20 years, 25 years of experience in this business, the core business has tremendous strength. And it's a high cash flow, uh, free cash flow business. And if we just stay focused for the next couple of quarters, we will see a huge 
uh, return on existing uh, i mean uh, usually i mean huge return in, in terms of profitability yes it will no may be measurable to the capital that we have then we kind of rethink on our strategy not rethink and fine tune and see what are the new new opportunities that's how we are thinking right now because it's important to keep our customers happy the advertisers happy you know and as you can see this quarter we have grown our customer base by 25% uh, from last year and overall the business is in the right trajectory these are technical points that you raised you know uh, but uh, i would say gradually will address these issues yeah, it is better yeah, to have a yeah, lot of cash week. in the books than not have debt in your book <laughs> yeah no that's uh, you know both the both the sides uh, too much is not good that is what the things are happening other side when we think the company has too much of debt is also not prob- that is a problem and too much cash without 7 8% trading when your business is yeah. having 25% kind of roc is just yeah. diluting the raw rocky anyway so uh, i will i have this two more strategic question uh, operational things is very clear from your presentations as well as the business understanding i have two more strategic questions one is see you are developing so many product two or three products are on the line uh, right. which might be might be implemented or commercialized maybe another two three quarters on the line i just trying to understand the product what you are developing it is already there in the market in some form uh whether it is travel related whether it is uh, business to business related whether it is um uh, some product is already there in the market i'm just trying to understand what just dial is trying to do to differentiate its product from what already in place uh whether it is google for search engine whether it is india mart for the b2b business whether it is travel related hundreds of uh, different kind of platforms are there so are you doing something which will differentiate yourself so the people will come to you not to others okay so let's understand our business our business is to uh, help small businesses get customers okay which has been for the last 25 years and how we have been doing it we have giving that one point uh, access to prospective users who are buyers who could find and discover and eventually find the right vendor for what they are looking for and thereby we have been benefiting you know so that model cannot change that remains that so just i will continue to be a platform which will co- generate quality leads for uh, businesses the big differentiator between us and the other players is in in our case when when uh, a small or medium businesses or any business or service or whatever get acquire customers that customer brings to them some there is a lifetime value opportunity with that customer other than most other platforms where the customers are owned by the platform these businesses uh, happen to be just suppliers mm. so that and if you think about uh, every small business want to become a medium sized business medium sized business wants to become a large sized business one day so they have to continue to have their own customer base and grow that base so justile plays a very important role in that now for overall user experience we may have to mimic some of the product features which are there in various verticals because as a horizontal just i'll give a unique uh, proposition which is that you can find local vendors you know in your neighborhood vendors for your products and services that you're looking for in most cases you will find names that are familiar uh, to you and you will be far more satisfied you know buying from those familiar names and now that the price difference is narrowing down uh, between online and offline and all that then the o- obvious loyalty or rather not the loyalty the faith is more on local vendors that i know of but if i have a platform like just style through which i can access those vendors and uh, uh, as a user i'm saying oh, i would prefer that now why well in that access should that have ability to transact online should that have ability to fix an appointment online should that have ability to place an order online bhai wo sab hona padega that only then the the platform becomes relevant so whatever we are doing in terms of product improvement features and all that is only fine tuning to up, make it up to date the basic principle of being a bridge between the buyer and the seller remains and our job is to continuously help small medium businesses grow their customer base but in that process if there are requirements to have certain features that is what we are working on 
So this association with the geo, uh, you know, the market looking at just dial is not just a just dial. At the moment, we are all looking at the just dial is a part of the Reliance Group. Now, right. geo is this, with this vast uh, uh, kind of a network which they already built across the India. How does that is coming to just dial as a strategic things, which will give them a competitive edge? over any other competitors available in Indian market? This is exactly okay. my question as I just try to hint directly to the point. How that Geo Association, now Geo is your owner of the company. Right. Of course, right. when Reliance buys something, they doesn't buy for a small thing. They buy something for a huge uh, kind of a growth outlook for a, over a longer period of time. Now trying right. to understand how that is a competitive advantage for you. Okay. So first is there are certain natural things that come with the Geo partnership. You know, Geo happens to be the largest cell phone provider in the country, almost in numbers. Now, we the business contact details, the business data that comes to Geo directly flows on to Just Style. And that's further strengthening our database in terms of listing small medium businesses in the length and breadth of, from the length and breadth of the country. Then the second thing is, if you look at it, uh, you know, uh, there are retailers which are, you know, geo partners. They also automatically come to our platform and thereby we are able to enrich our content as well as our uh, vendor, vendor base. Hmm? Then the third, of course, integrating geo uh, reliance by smart stores and platforms and all that. But let us tell you about the original thinking behind this strategy was how to get there was there was a kind of a regulatory thing that was happening where where actually uh, the government wanted to differentiate between a um, you know uh, a platform which is you know so what do you call uh, third party marketplace uh, uh, different from first party marketplace now somehow that regulatory reform has not happened right now so we have plans in place where the original plan was just I'll becomes the third party marketplace which is like the vendors are any of the local uh, local uh, dealers and local manufacturer, whatever it is, and you directly as a customer buy from those pick and choose those vendors. And uh, the other other model was like a warehouse based model where it was first party marketplace. Basically, you then directly buy from a Reliance, Jio, Mart, or uh, Amazon, and whatever it is. So that since that change has not taken place and there's no immediate. Uh, you know, plans to do that. We said we would rather focus on a core business, more particularly because the uh, core business was really hurt. You know, but yes, mm -hmm. you will see in due course of time what you said precisely will happen. The big plans, the big picture. You know, it's not going to be a small business, but with the right time, uh, you know, this will happen. Thank you very much. I will join the queue for further question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Nikhil Chaudhary from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes please go ahead. Uh, thank you for giving me opportunity and congrats on good numbers. So just uh, one thing I want to understand, especially related to intangible underdevelopment, uh, how that is progressing. Basically, are we still capitalizing at the same run rate? And how long do we plan to do that? Is it going to be in next uh, uh, FI24 as well? And uh, when do we expect uh, that uh, capitalization to hit uh, our income statement? Basically, when we are thinking of monetizing uh, those assets, uh, all three, uh, JD, Expert, uh, JD Expert uh, and uh, JD Commerce and JD Reality. So just want to understand uh, the dynamics of that particular part. Thank you. So Nikhil, the capitalization during the quarter was uh, about uh, 5 crores, taking the total capitalization to about 27 crores. Now these projects, uh, the way it have works is that they are built in a phase-wise manner and as and when a particular phase gets completed, uh, that particular phase starts getting uh, depreciated in uh, p &L over the estimated useful life of the asset. At this point of time, I think uh, sometime in... Uh, uh, possibly in say first quarter of next year, uh, some of these particular existing capitalizations should uh, start getting uh, expensed over useful life of whatever uh, two to three years. Understood, Abhishek. Thank you and good luck for next quarter. Thank you. Thank you.
we have a next question from the line of Mohit Motwani from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my question, uh, Abhishek, is on the paid campaigns addition. You have been doing a lot of good uh, paid campaigns due to the monthly payment plans. Uh, now, just wanted to understand, are there any three to four verticals, you know, which are actually helping you, uh, you know, grow your paid campaigns very healthily? Uh, are there two, three verticals that you want to call out? Uh, just wanted to get some insights on that. Thank you. So Mohit, paid campaigns, even historically for us, uh, no single vertical, so to say, contributes more than uh, 4 to 5% of our revenues. And even now, in terms of recovery that we are seeing, it is uh, extremely broad-based. So paid campaigns and realizations are hardly 2-3% short of uh, pre-COVID uh, peak numbers. And that gap should uh, get bridged uh, very shortly. And the good part is that both... Uh, geographically as well as uh, in terms of uh, type of businesses there is a broad-based uh, recovery uh, uh, thanks abhishek one more uh, question i uh, just wanted to understand you know the the pay campaigns that you have added in the last uh, few quarters which were mostly on monthly 70 percent were on monthly uh, how many how what kind of renewals have you seen in these uh, in these additions uh, can you give some color on that so most of these particular uh, uh, monthly plan signups that we do, they in a way sort of get uh, auto renewed. At this point of time of the overall total paid campaign base that we have, now about 55% of those particular paid campaigns are monthly plan basis. In fact, the key advantage with monthly plans is that, that uh, it obviously is much more affordable to the customer. There is a... Uh, every month uh, uh, payout that happens instead of a chunky payout and uh, that is how it works uh, sure thanks Abhishek. thank you thank you we have a next question from the line of rishit parek from nippon india please go ahead uh, hi am i audible yes sir sure uh, uh, hi hi thanks uh, Thanks uh, for, for the call, right? I just had two, three questions. Uh, Abhishek, uh, Mani, just wanted to understand when... So we, we've hired a fair bit of people in the last, I think, three to four quarters, right? For in, especially in the sales uh, side, right? So just wanted to understand three things there. One, what are the hiring plans? Second, how do we measure the productivity of these employees? And essentially... Do you think we're operating at an optimum level in terms of productivity or there's more to be done going forward and hence a lot of these you know, employees will be more productive going forward and we don't need to hire as much? So, Rishit, on hiring, yes. so on hiring plans, you would see that uh, first three quarters or maybe say uh, first two quarters of this year, the majority or bulk of uh, uh, sales hiring happened. Last particular quarter, overall headcount of the company has increased by only 2.2% uh, uh, only. So I think the uh, way we are looking at it is that uh, since there is more reception of our particular product, even after taking a bit of price hikes, so we would want to sort of uh, in a calibrated manner keep hiring, keeping next uh, two to three fiscal years in mind. Having said that, the current uh, sales trend that we have for the same tenure, productivity levels are already higher versus pre-COVID productivity levels. But for the staff that got hired in last two to three quarters, they would definitely start yielding much better results after they become, say, six to nine months tenured. So for next uh, couple of quarters, two, three quarters, whatever internal targets that we have, the existing sales strength itself should be able to cater to it. Uh, but uh, since we are seeing decent uptick in terms of uh, productivity, so we might want to continue hiring at a calibrated pace, not as aggressive as we did, say, in last three to four quarters. Okay. Uh, and uh, just wanted to sort of understand on the outlook perspective with, with what you see in the market, right? Is there over, let's say, a two-year period, three-year period, do you think you can continue the same pace of paid listing addition or this is just some of the one-off gains that you lost in COVID and that's come back? So if you see now for last uh, uh, sort of uh, 
three four quarters three quarters uh, we have been adding 18 to 20 21000 uh, paid campaigns every quarter in fact the current running quarter we intend to take our monthly plans up from even 70% to 80% or even higher the idea is make it as affordable as possible for the smes and the way you can say that in a, a mutual fund industry you have that sip book uh in a similar way we would want smes to sort of see their particular 1500 2000 rupees spend on just style as a mandatory spend for their particular business and uh, since Let's, we are seeing pos- yeah. good good and since we Indeed. are seeing a positive uh, response on that i think paid campaigns oh, should keep uh, trending upwards and again going forward whatever revenue growth that, that we will target internal target would be half of the growth should materialize from paid campaign growth and rest half should be we should be able to take corresponding price hikes that is what demonstrates Correct. the true potential of the product so you have to uh, understand the opportunity is different post covid you know post covid small businesses and and medium businesses are now realized digital first should be the strategy not like traditional media traditional platforms are now with getting second priority so hence that priority shifting to digital first we are going to be one of the beneficiaries that's because of that we are able to price it you know better and we are likely to get more number of uh, customers you know advertisers so this probably explains to you that in the next uh, next um, probably couple of years we see continuous growth both in the number of customers and uh, unique customers and um, and as well as average ticket size um so sure. that is very useful can i can i ask one more question or should i get back in the queue sure 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 okay uh, just uh, on the newer initiatives right uh, I, i think so could you just help us understand where the progress is today broadly and is there a timeline that is sort of useful for us to monitor uh, the progress or the launch deadlines let's say over a year yeah. or two year period again i'm not asking for a specific quarter but again anything just to understand how should we look at it so jd experts the pilot has been very successful we are all set to uh, you know accelerate uh, probably hopefully by the end of next quarter we should be uh, you know full fledged uh, you know um, access by people users from multiple cities uh, uh, regarding uh, jd mart uh, there are certain important uh, feature development and all that being done and there is uh, renewed focus uh, from the management team and you will see that fruits of that also shaping up around the same time as far as jd shopping is concerned as i explained to you uh, that project we didn't want to prioritize although we have invested a lot of money and resources in it and we continue to capitalize it we just want to delay the launch because there is no immediate urgency to get that rolling you know uh, which is the, the shopping thing Uh, because of sure. the 3p 1p marketplace uh, you know confusion that existed before it's no more there so as a group you know as a reliance company we said like you know let just I'll focus on all the core services and b2b activities and uh, then look at shopping as a last priority see also just to add okay. one point here on jd shopping uh, the way ecosystem is uh, shaping up so suppose you sell a 100 rupee product on your platform your commissions broadly are in the range of anywhere 7 to 8% on an average depending on which category uh, you operate in now we did certain pilots and ideally as a business i would want all my expenses including my performance marketing spend or any advertising spend to be curtailed in that 8% so that over long run it becomes a healthy unit economics business at this right. point of time for us that seems uh, sort of uh, difficult basis whatever pilots we have done and we see that others in the industry are also obviously unable to operate on a positive unit economics so consciously we want to be sure that we don't end up spending you can spend tons of money at the day, end of day uh, you will not have that much sticky users so we want to be sure that we keep improving our platform and at the right time do those particular spends to scale up uh, traffic so i thought uh, we'll add this that's right no no that is very useful yeah thank you so much uh, all the best guys thank you thank you thank you 
participants to ask a question, please click on the raise hand icon available on the toolbar or you may click on Q&A icon to raise hand. We have a question from the line of Vivekanand Subbaraman from Ambit Private Limited. Please go ahead. Mr. Subbaraman, please unmute your audio and go ahead. Can you please unmute your microphone from the toolbar? Since there is no response, we'll move on to the next question from the line of Hemal S, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, hi, just have two quick questions. Maybe I just joined the call late. Maybe you already addressed it. Uh, what is the total collection amount? Every quarter used to give the uh, collection amount. What was the collection amount this quarter? It was 245 crores. Uh, and what was it last quarter? Last quarter was about 230 crores and same quarter last year was 150 crores. Okay. So quarter on quarter, I'm seeing like active paid campaigns and, uh, you know, growth slowing down. Is that a concern for you or is it just, uh, just the seasonality is, or is that not a concern for you? So we added about uh, over 18,000 campaigns. And as I mentioned in my opening remarks as well, October, which was a typical uh, festival month. So there, part of the additions that were lesser than say 20,000 run rate was attributable to that particular month. So overall, the exit run rate was quite uh, healthy. I think as we go into future quarters, uh, we should continue to see healthy additions. So festive seasons like, uh, you know, Dashera and uh, Navratri, Dashera, Diwali is usually the lowest ever month for Just I, you know, in the 12-month calendar year. Uh, so that's when the uh, both acquisition of customers and revenue dips, uh, but then it picks up. So And usually the uh, March, uh, the last quarter is the best quarter. Thank you for that uh, clarification. One more is when you say unearned revenue 402, the way you had explained two quarters back is what you see this year is generally what you should expect six months down the line. Is that still accurate? Is that my understanding accurate? So it's actually so four, a 12 month down the line, I think. Oh, so go ahead. Yeah. yeah, so 402 crores is advances that I have received from my customers for which services are yet to be rendered. So this 402 crores, the average amortization schedule could be, say, around uh, eight to nine months. Over next eight to nine months, this 400 crores will uh, get accrued. Having said that, in those eight to nine months, I will also sign up customers and get collections. A part of it would obviously get accrued in that period also. So this okay. quarter's 221 crores. Part of it came out of unearned revenue as on 30th September and part of it came from fresh collections that I received during last particular quarter itself. Got it. And, and absolutely final. Since we have such a large cash uh, amount, um, is it uh, what is an average yield that we should expect for FY24? Like, uh, I know it's it's published, but I'm about 7.3%. So portfolios yield to maturity at this point of time is around 7.3%, 7.2 to 7.3%. Okay, and we can say the duration around five years, is that, is that what you No, so we about? operate at a duration of about uh, three, 3.2 years, primarily because all mutual fund investments become tax efficient as soon as three years are crossed. Okay, uh, perfect. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Vivekanand Subbaraman from Ambit Private Limited. Please go ahead. Um, hi, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I have two sets of questions. One is on uh, operational numbers and financials. So uh, Abhishek, uh, need your help on the split of the uh, revenue and campaign stop 11 versus rest of the market. That's one. Second, uh, uh, if you would help us with the, uh, with the ANP and the guidance for uh, 23 and 24. 
and uh, last financial question is on the uh, estimated realizable value of collection i think now that uh, you know 70% of the collections are for monthly campaigns uh, you know how do i uh, make it equivalent to what you were reporting pre covid last question is on um, on an on a slide uh, that you have put this time uh, on on enhanced analytics for customers so here uh, what exactly are you doing and uh, and uh, where have you progressed in this regard and uh, how will this help you uh, you know in your business and monetization thank you okay so vivek on your first query top 11 cities they contributed about 62% to revenue and uh, 42% to uh, paid campaigns so essentially ticket size in tier 1 is higher than tier 2 tier 3 that is why higher contribution by value lesser by volumes uh, anp guidance so in a steady state we would want to spend say around 6 to 7% of our top line on advertising spends this particular year we spent more on uh, ramping up our particular sales teams etc part of those spends got offset by lesser uh, anp spends having said that pre covid we used to get about 158 to 160 million quarterly users with about 18 crores of quarterly spend right now last couple of quarters i've been at about 156 million or so with just about 5 uh, 5 and 1/2 uh, crores of quarterly spend so net net uh, anp spends can be ramped up uh, at any point of time for next year as i said that i will budget in something around 6 7% on your third question around the estimated realizable value so last quarter uh, it was about 260 to 65 crores Uh, very slightly short of 270 crores the previous uh, quarter the way we look at realizable value is that this is my current estimation this is the amount of money that i should ideally be receiving in next uh, one year from my customers and this we keep back testing over our historic data so whatever i had estimated last year uh, same quarter i did almost end up uh, receiving that much uh, amount over the next uh, 12 months pre covid this uh, used to be peak of about uh, 235 crores or so so we are about broadly uh, 15 to 18% higher versus uh, pre covid levels certain months are even higher versus uh, 20% higher versus pre covid on your query around enhanced uh, analytics so when we run campaigns for our customers we try our best to give them visibility on how their campaign is performing so they get visibility in terms of their listing showing up uh, searches happening for their particular specific listing for their category uh, clicks happening calls coming to them uh, request for codes going to them so this particular analytics section gives them complete visibility on how their campaign is performing on a monthly basis etc so we have added new features such as giving smes ability to sort their particular uh, leads by relevance sort their leads by recency trying to give them as much control as possible on their particular campaign so they can make best use of whatever uh, visibility that we provide them and over time this simplicity and being able to track performance of their campaign directly correlates with how my renewals pan out how my uh, customers perceive uh, roi from my platform okay makes sense so uh, abhishek uh, thank you for for the uh, for all the answers just one uh, follow through so the realizable value of collections is 260 to 265 crore in 3q would you be able to help us with the number for the last 12 months because uh, you know this migration to uh, monthly packages has been underway since the uh, you know covid recovery um, i am just trying to understand because oh. the, the reported numbers are still lower than covid but uh, you know in, in fy24 you may suddenly have a sharp jump in revenue um, you know basis what you just commented right now so for first 9 uh, months of this year first three quarters realizable value was broadly around uh, 765 to 770 crores 
I tend to give a range because it's a estimate. So 765 to 770, and the same for first three quarters of last year was about 435 to 440 crores. 435 to 440 crore. Okay. So it's yes, because last year obviously there was significant impact of COVID in first uh, uh, one or two quarters. Right, right. So uh, essentially, Abhishek, if we end up with uh, let's say realizable value of collections um, broadly um, similar to what we saw in Q. is it fair to assess that the um, fiscal 24 revenue number will be 770 plus 260 so around 1000 crore i'm just i'm just trying to understand because you know the uh, percolation to revenue uh, has been you know difficult for us to model okay so uh, technically if i were to understand see whatever i will sell in next particular quarter those customers will pay me the signed amount over a period of next 12 months okay yeah and uh, whatever that particular money comes in will get accrued uh, over their respective tenures so it might not one on one correlate so the first 9 uh, uh, months amount yes with the great certainty i can say that yes that will surely get uh, accrued as uh, revenue in uh, fiscal 24 For last three to four months, a part of it could sort of spill over. Okay, understood. This is very helpful. Um, thank you and all the rest. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Rupesh Tatia from Intel Sense Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, I I am relatively new to the company, so uh, some of the questions uh, might be slightly basic. So my first uh, first question, sir, is I mean, do you do you have a margin guidance for us? Let, let's say in FY twenty four, or or when we can get back to let's say pre COVID margins, and how how do we get there? So in terms of we do not uh, per se provide a specific. Uh, margin guidance, but uh, pre-COVID we used to operate at around 25 to 28 percent sort of uh, margins. We are obviously coming out of this particular COVID impact in terms of uh, our top line trying to catch up with the pre-COVID numbers. As far as expenses are concerned, we have already made uh, uh, significant investments in terms of ramping up our particular uh, sales team. so i think uh, next year same quarter or thereabouts we should be sort of on a quarterly basis be uh, coming closer to pre covid uh, type of margin uh, levels or could be slightly earlier uh, as well okay okay that is good to know sir the the, the second uh, question i have is like i think the pre covid your active uh, campaigns were around 520k Uh, and i think we 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 we've reached that number you know in this uh, quarter and this you know might be the easy part i mean whatever we lost some of our customers were impacted in covid they are now coming back so and you have done so much hiring and so much investments into the business right and you are now saying that we'll grow pretty much you will add 20000 pretty much every quarter more or less and plus you will continuously grow now for next you know let's say 6 to 8 quarters So can you give some you know second level details uh, around that because till till here i think the journey at least was relatively easy in my mind how how do we go from here from let's say 520k to let's say 700k in in next 6 to 8 quarters okay so let us look at it slightly from a uh, top down perspective <clears throat> so india broadly uh, basis ministries estimates itself has about 60 65 million small and medium businesses another 15 to 20 million could be freelancer such as gym instructor yoga teacher swimming coach etc which are not technically smes but they are potential listings for us so broadly the universe could be say 80 million listings now post covid i would argue that against this particular 80 million listings 
for sure one percent of this particular universe should surely be at least advertising on a platform such as just time that itself translates to say 800000 my database at this point of time is about 35 million listings in a steady state we think that 5% of the database should surely be our particular paid subscribers so that way uh, that translates to sort of a huge opportunity numbers in terms of a million plus or close to uh, one and a half, two million subscribers. So this, there is no dearth of opportunity per se. Good part is that COVID in itself has made SMEs realize that they need to be present on online platforms from there, from where they could get their particular business to get discovered. During COVID, SMEs which had some online presence could still cater to uh, getting some particular consumers. But ones who were completely offline, they do realize that the way it is important to have an internet connection for your business, a telecom connection, similar way you need to be present on an online platform. Plus the average ticket size of 18 to 20,000 rupees that we charge annually, that overall we feel is very, very affordable for any small and medium business. It's not an amount which will pinch any particular SME's affordability. Okay, okay, I, I, that's that's clear, sir. The, the the another another part of the question is you you have you know talked about price hikes and and let's say I mean whatever your first batch of you know monthly customers maybe they are now I don't know eighteen months old or or maybe more than twelve months old. What what kind of price hikes uh, we, we we have been able to you know get this or 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 if you can talk about behavior of you know this cohort. In, in terms of, I mean, they're going into longer plans. Are they converted into ECS? What kind of services they're using? If you can give some color on that cohort, for example. Okay. So even uh, today or even before we adopted this particular aggressive monthly plan strategy, we still had a good chunk of uh, customers who have been paying us on a monthly plan basis for last uh, several years. Why I'm emphasizing this particular point is that for me, it is important that a particular customer should keep paying me on a month on month basis. I am not that obsessed about getting that extra 10, 12% price hike from that particular customer. In any case for a digital advertising platform, there will be customers who might choose not to renew on an immediate basis, etc. So whatever new customers that are coming in, they tend to obviously face price hikes. Customers who have paid in lump sum, whenever their next renewals are due, they also obviously face price hikes. So overall, the target is that part of the growth on the overall cohort basis should come via price hikes that we can take. So. I'm not that worried about whether a customer who signed up 15 months ago and they are happily paying me 2200 rupees a month, whether I should work to get 2400 out of that particular customer or not. Okay, so I mean, what kind of price hikes we do? 5% or 10, 15%? Is, is it I mean, what, what kind of okay, range? So there are uh, two types of listings that we sell. One is the premium listings. Other is the non-premium listings. Premium listings are the top fixed positions. So if you're searching for, say, dentist in Bandra West, uh, the dentist coming on top, they have typically blocked that inventory for all uh, for the entire tenure. So if 100 searches are happening, their name will come on top position in all the 100 searches. Post those premium listings, rest of the customers get visibility in proportion to the money being paid by them. There is no fixed uh, position. Now, in premium listings, there is a scientific way by which uh, price hike gets percolated. So the way it works is that for categories which are seeing growth in traffic, part of the growth in traffic gets percolated as uh, price hike every month. So whenever a particular customer comes up for renewal, say, uh, at the end of their particular tenure, they see a certain price hike. This particular model also helps us to uh, sort of reduce prices in those categories which are uh, not in uh, demand. So that way, if a particular category is seeing, say, 10% uh, drop in uh, traffic, we are happy to pass uh, or reduce prices by, say, 6% or whatever part of that growth or degrowth. 
on the non premium listings uh, we take price hikes from time to time which is where we took about 12 to 15% price hike sometime in uh, uh, second quarter of uh, this particular year okay okay i see i see then one 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 small question i mean in, in terms of you know sales employees can you talk about i don't know capacity utilization i i know you say that some of these people will start you know contributing nine months forward but in in terms of i don't know capacity utilization might not be the right word but you 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 get uh, what i'm asking okay so the way we sort of evaluate is uh, we look at something <coughs> as uh, uh, gross margins or gross uh, sort of uh, cost of sales which is nothing but uh, Uh, direct costs associated with sales, such as salaries and incentives that we do our sales employees. So at this point of time, we are operating at about uh, 47, 40 percent uh, being our uh, cost of sales. And uh, pre-COVID, uh, during our best uh, months, we used to operate at about uh, 40 percent or so. Now this 48 percent obviously is higher, partly because there is a significant hiring that has uh, uh, happened. so on the financial side i would obviously want this 48% to go towards uh, 40% and at the same time as far as uh, potential in terms of output or productivity is concerned uh, definitely on a overall basis there is still potential to improve their particular productivity by uh, 20% 30% if not uh, more okay okay i see and and then the final final question sir is in in terms of you know competitive uh, positioning post the you know acquisition by reliance group i mean i mean can you give some color on in 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 certain areas you know we we have got maybe some some areas where we were trying to work really hard in the past but we we weren't able to get success now with with the help of reliance you know in some of these areas we we are becoming kind of leaders and then what are some areas where you know there are still kind of areas of improvement if if you can you know talk about competitive landscape post post lines take over okay so there instead of uh, specific areas i would say our strength is in being a horizontal so the key strength of the platform is that one place where one platform which connects all these small and medium businesses in india you search for any particular category you will surely find relevant results the depth and breadth of results is far superior on the platform over last few quarters and in coming quarters what you will see the same uh, set of uh, database will have much richer content in terms of you being able to see deals and offers being offered by some of these particular businesses uh, their particular tariff cards menus catalogs uh, basically a much more Uh, curated content which will enable users to take much better decisions which particular sme to avail services from and so on so overall instead of uh, pre reliance or post reliance i would say that as far as core business is concerned uh, that is more to the strength lies in being horizontal a uh, very well oiled sales machinery the network that we have pan india in terms of newer initiatives which pertain to adding a transactional layer both on the services side as well as on the product side that is uh, where we are working closely with the reliance team and uh, those particular initiatives are underway okay okay thank you thank you so much sir for answering all my questions thank you thank you we have a next question from the line of amarnath bakat from ministry of finance of oman please go ahead Yeah, hi. Uh, I hope I am audible. Yes, sir. Yes, please go ahead. Yes. Just uh, two small again the strategic follow up questions on this. Uh, after uh, Reliance uh, get into your business as a promoter, now is there any strategical change happen to the business? Say now they came into of their way of looking at the business might be different than the just dial working before that. So if you can. Uh, help us to understand is there any major strategic outlook change uh, after the reliance comes to the board so in terms of strategic change i would say that uh, the key priority was that we had two successive years of covid impact in terms of 
say our top line going down by about 30 32% versus pre covid levels and the clear strategic discussion that we had was that how can we in this particular fiscal 23 itself quickly bounce back uh, to pre covid levels so while the pnl revenue will take another quarter or whatever to catch up but uh, we have been able to uh, the fact that we have been able to cross pre covid levels of realizable value Uh, collections at 245 crores are anyway higher versus 235 crores of pre covid revenue uh, sorry uh, i was i'm not looking at the operational factor see whether reliance is there or not there the operational recovery post covid it is even to be bound to be happened uh, that is just a matter of time whether six quarter or eight quarter or two years or three years i'm just trying right. to understand from a strategic point of view the way the company was working before reliance came in and after the reliance took over the majority stake of course there must be something strategical outlook change that okay now the new promoter came they want that business to be run in a little different way or something in a new direction i'm just trying to understand that is there any directional change happened in the company after the reliance came into picture not the operational part of it okay so as i mentioned earlier the directional change primarily is to say that this particular platform is a search discovery based platform can we add a transactional layer because things are obviously moving online having said that those particular transactional layer we are also very clear that we should not be doing something which just results in bleeding of money because something does not seem to have unit economics in the long run so some of our newer initiatives are clearly an outcome of those particular strategic discussions which are to say that add a transactional layer such that smes which were getting discovered on the platform earlier can interactions between the user and that sme also get routed via the platform itself okay so it is more of an integrated approach rather than and uh, piecemeal approach probably because now you wanted to have an app which is integrated in nature from top to bottom so once the sme comes into the comes into your platform they will start from searching up to the end of payment and delivery right so in and certain categories yep. yes so in certain categories uh, up to till the end in certain categories it could be enabling digital payments so even if there is a transaction happening in an offline store can the payment be collected via a particular platform so yeah that is how it is okay is there any change in the ma- top management or the organization structure after this deal happened any new management staff i'm talking about the top management staff either came in or came out or somebody is about to came in something like that in the top management i'm talking about ceo ceo minus 1 so at uh, uh, management level there haven't been uh, any changes at uh, board level we recently inducted uh, two new two new directors which were announced as part of last board meet okay so management was as it is as it was before this acquisition took place yes even as part of our discussions uh, uh reliance group was very clear that uh, they would want the existing management itself to take over and keep uh, running the business which is how it has panned out okay and the last piece of it bit operational now the hiring spree uh in the last few quarters is suddenly seriously accelerated uh of course uh, we all understand that at some point of time uh, the return will come and it is fixed in expenditure for which the operating leverage will play out at some time just trying to understand why that was so much of uh, 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 recruitment happened almost in a one quarter or two quarter rather than on a staggered manner as and when business recovered and as and when the operating leverage from the existing staff are getting uh, are getting factored into the uh into the pnl and the balance sheet okay see let us understand when i hire say 100 sales employees uh they take anywhere around say 4 to 6 months to start producing some decent revenue and they reach their particular peak productivity in say 12 months time frame 
now if i were to follow this particular approach to say that okay i will hire 500 people i will wait for them to become op uh, optimal at the end of 9 months 12 months i would unnecessarily end up losing time so what we did was once we fine tuned our strategy to say that okay we will aggressively focus on selling monthly payment plans we saw productivity of existing team itself was ramping up that is when we uh, went about hiring uh, uh, aggressive hiring that aggressive hiring also in my view already was done in a staggered manner it was not one particular single quarter where we hired we hired over last four quarters so that was already uh, phased out so uh, as a as an investor so probably we should read into in that that as a management you were confident that even if the hiring spree was accelerated in the last 3 4 quarters the utilization maximization will eventually happen and the idleness of the existing staff will not hurt your margin profile going ahead yes whatever is the cost structure see whatever people i hire their salary costs have already hurt the pnl so to say now going forward whenever the top line starts to show up in pnl those margins should automatically see expansion internally the way i look at it is the 190 crore cost structure that i have today on a quarterly basis on pnl basis it shows up as 221 crores of top line but for me that 190 crore fetched me 245 crores of collections and 265 crores of realizable value so in a way that particular margin profile is already better versus what gets reported pnl margin is obviously with a lag that 221 crore is coming from customers whom i had sold in last 3 to 4 quarters but my costs are already getting amortized on a uh, monthly basis mm, thank you that's it thank you very much is like the so confidence of the management thank you thank, thank you, you so we'll take a last two questions we have a question from vivekanand subbaraman from ambit private limited please go ahead uh hi just one uh, question um uh, abhishek have you uh, spoken about this uh, the the headcount uh, that you have deputed to some of these projects that are under development um you know just to unpack the uh, you know the headcount uh, question better so the headcount attributed to some of these uh, projects that is not uh, very high at this point of time uh, would be say uh, sub uh, 200 or so but i'll have to check on exact numbers okay and and are these uh, staff members uh, you know fungible in terms of uh, you know can they be reassigned to uh, you know for example jd shopping uh, you guys took a call that uh, perhaps the regulations and the the extent of cash burn needed uh, doesn't entail a very aggressive push so uh, are you reassigning these people uh, to to the core business itself is is that how you are carrying it out yes that is very much fungible uh, the Uh, straight away proof is that this particular quarter while total headcount addition was 300 employees my sales count addition is already 600 so some of those particular employees we found it prudent to reshuffle and reassign to our core business right and, and uh, last quarter i believe you had mentioned that uh, you know you have around uh 600 650 people in jd mart is that is that the same or or have you added any more people yet so that stands at broadly around 750 or so at this point of time all right thank you very much and all the best thank you thank you we'll take a last question from sarang sanil from rw investment advisors please go ahead good evening sir uh, congrats on good set of numbers so a couple of questions uh, could you give a break up of revenue and paid campaigns into tier 1 and 2 3 so tier 1 cities contributed about uh, 62% to revenues and by paid campaigns they contributed about uh, 42% okay so that's uh, broadly the top 11 cities is it 
yes top 11 cities okay i understand and this okay uh, so one thing i don't understand is that so i posed as a seller and uh, i experienced uh, so i tried calling jd uh, and everything so uh, within so i tried with multiple cities and the minimum uh, subscription cost for a uh, city uh, called kaimador which could probably be a tier 2 tier 3 city the minimum subscription fee was 3000 rupees and some place like bangalore the minimum subscription was 4000 per month okay i don't understand how annually it turns out to be uh, rupees 20000 18 to 20000 on paper while you know when we analyze the monthly thing it is around you know 48 45 to 50000 right so is it because a lot of people are dropping out okay so couple of points there one the average ticket size that you see is on a blended basis for pan india and uh, tier 1 cities typically are about uh, uh, 30 35% higher whereas the other smaller cities are at a lower price point secondly this particular pricing also tends to be customized at a category level so no not all uh, customers of uh, uh, across the city will face uh, uh, similar pricing right so once our particular feet on street uh, uh, comes up they understand what are your keyword requirements which all geographies you want to target basis that they propose the uh, relevant pricing understood so so could you give us an average say ticket price for tier 1 city or tier 2 3 city so as i said that in case of uh, let me check i might have it handy tier 1 cities versus the average it is about uh, 30% uh, higher right right no and absolute absolute yeah. absolute i will have to check should be around 26 27000 rupees or so okay so that's like roughly 2000 rupees per month uh yeah 2200 rupees per month on an uh, average for a tier 1 city is it okay okay also a follow up on the same so what percentage of overall paid campaigns stay for a year or more on an average uh what percent of sorry of the overall paid campaigns say we have about 5 5.2 lakh right Uh, so, so how many of them actually stay for a year so historically the churn rate that we have had which we see as if 100 customers signed up today how many go into year 2 uh, exactly one year down the line that is around 55% retention say around 40 42% do not go into year 2 having said that in our particular case which we have discussed multiple times in the past as well a particular customer wanting to pause their campaign after a period of 1 year does not mean that they have churned out for life advertising tends to be a slightly discretionary spend where a person might think that okay let me pause the campaign for 3 months see how my business is doing 3 months later 6 months later they might want to come back into the paid ecosystem with higher or lower spends so the way we look at it is i mean overall uh, how many particular customers that we are signing up rather than okay just after one year how many are going into year 2 or not mm. okay Understand. for example during the covid period customers who say churned out that particular year or did not renew a good chunk of them are coming back into the paid ecosystem mm. today okay got it got it got it also one more thing so <clears throat> from my experience you don't give any discounts for customers paying Uh, upfront annual fee right why is it so say a b2b uh, player like india mart typically gives out a discount for paying upfront okay so this was a intentional strategic call that we took we did use to give some particular discounts for upfront payments uh, a certain say cash discount which sounds logical as well but then what we realized was that uh, uh, in those particular situations at times there tend to be bit of miscommitments because the sales person is wanting to get the lump sum money up front so we said that we anyway as an organization are keen to sign up as many customers on a monthly plan basis we actually do not want customers to pay up uh, on a lump sum basis up front 
we want those particular customers to pay us on a monthly basis and keep paying us for a longer time frame so that is the reason we decided that okay uh, let us withdraw those particular discounts on upfront plans having said that uh, our particular uh, uh, branches do have a discretion to run some short term offers that they might want to do which oh, is okay. a key feature in any uh, business sure sure understood understood all the best all the best thank you thank you i would now like to hand the conference over to mr abhishek bansal for closing comments over to you sir thank you everyone for joining us in case you have any further queries please uh, do reach out to us we would do our best to address and uh, that's it from our side thank you thank you on behalf thank you sir on behalf of just i limited that concludes this conference Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.